There are three stages of process validation. The stage one is process design, stage two is process qualification, and stage three is continuous process verification. And there are total four types of validation that are prospective validation, concurrent validation, retrospective validation, and revalidation. Here, what I will do is to correlate the types of process validation with these three stages of validation. So, before I start, let me first tell you what is process validation. Process validation is defined as the collection and evaluation of data from the process design stage throughout production, which establishes scientific evidence that process is capable of consistently delivering quality products. Now, why process validation is required? Process validation is a critical part of quality assurance procedure. If I am talking about practically for any sector today, uh, you have to perform process validation at various stages of production life cycle to confirm whether your process is effectively controlling the quality of your finished product or not. Now, let me tell you what the FDA's thought process about the quality assurance principle. The first. You can't assure the quality by only doing in-process checks and performing finished product testing. The second, the process should be designed in such a way so the quality, safety and efficacy is inbuilt into the product. To understand this uh, concept, there is another concept called quality-wide design. This is another big topic. I will make separate video on this topic. So please keep watching this channel and if you have not subscribed it, please subscribe. Now the question is how to correlate this process validation with product quality. Once you validate the process, it shows that the process is consistent enough to produce the quality product from batch to batch and unit to unit. This is just I try to correlate that how the process validation is important for getting the quality product. Now move on to the various stages of the PV which I have told you in beginning. So there are three stages process design, process qualification and continuous process verification. And the four types is prospective, concurrent, retrospective and revalidation. So I will tell you one by one and also tell you when and where these different types of validation to be performed. Now start with stage 1 that is process design or prospective validation. At this stage we define the commercial production process which is suitable for commercial manufacturing. At this stage we take the various pilot and scale up batches to identify which quality attributes and which process parameter are critical. That means we define the CQAs and CPPs that is critical quality attributes and critical process parameter which are to be monitored in phase 2. We do the risk assessment and define what controls we put to mitigate the risk. For that we use some tools like FMEA that is failure mode and effect analysis. If you want to know about how the FMEA is performed and various rating for severity occurrence and detection of failure mode, I have already prepared one tutorial on this topic. I have given the link below in the description so you can watch that. Now come back to the process validation. Now I correlate the phase 1 with prospective validation if you see this type of validation is performed before the production and during the development stage. So we define the process parameter and CQA based on the knowledge gained on the process variable and draw up the trial plan and do the risk analysis and establishes the control strategy that's why it's called prospective validation. So both stage 1 in the that is process design and prospective validation are very similar in the in terms of uh, work we perform. Now move on to the stage 2 which is process qualification. I will correlate this stage with another type of validation which is concurrent validation. And this is nothing but we qualify the process which we have designed in stage 1. And in general terms we call this is a process validation. For this, we qualify our process on three commercial scale production batches and monitor all the process parameters as closely as possible. We do the stratified sampling and collect all the data for CQA and CPPs, which is called critical quality attributes and critical process parameter, which gives us in-depth insight on variability and our current controls. We also check the design of the facility and qualification of equipment at this stage the goal of this stage is to assure 
and demonstrate that the process will remain in the state of control during commercial manufacturing process. If you read about the concurrent validation, we do the same thing that I have explained here for the stage 2 which is process qualification. Now move on to the stage 3 which is continuous process verification. At this stage, uh, we can correlate with the this stage with the retrospective validation. So at this stage, we collect and evaluate the information and data about the performance of the process and final control test. We try to determine how well the process parameter remains to the acceptable range. While doing such evaluation, we assume that the process composition and equipment remain unchanged and the data should be assessed periodically to determine whether requalification should be performed or not. This analysis includes the relevant process trends, quality of incoming material, in-process material, etc. And the data generated is statistically trended and reviewed by the trained personnel we may call as subject master experts. So this is all about the continuous process verification or retrospective validation. Now the last one is the revalidation. Before telling you about the revalidation, I'll just let me ask the let me ask the question and answer you why revalidation is required. So whenever you have introduced any new element in the manufacturing process, the revalidation have to be performed to find out their effect effect of this change. So when any change are made in the process or its environment, it is very essential to ensure that it should not have any adverse impact on the product quality or process characteristics. So there can be a number of changes in the manufacturing uh, process or any standard operating procedure that may impact the product quality. So I'll give you a few examples here for why process validation or revalidation is required when you have made any change in the process material or in environment. The first one is change in starting material. If you change the source of material, there may be chances of change in physical attribute which can alter the mechanical properties of the material and consequently may have adverse impact or effect on the product or the process. The second is change in packing material. If you switch the packing material, you may also be forced to make the changes in the product procedure you are following during the packaging so which may impact the product quality or product stability changes in process anytime if you alter the manufacturing process there may be a chances that the subsequent step may be affected because the change you have made the change in the process and which may affect the product quality change in equipment many times it is required to repair maintain and replacement of any key component of the equipment which you can't avoid. So it is required to assess whether the quality is affected after any major change, repair or replacement or any maintenance activity is performed. Change in support system or production area. Sometimes there are rearrangement or support system or production area which may also affect the product quality. Especially if you are making any change like uh, the ventilation system, HVAC system. So this is all about the validation. Thanks for watching this video. And the content I have explained to you here, I have referred from the FDS guidance. Thank you. If you have not subscribed this channel, please subscribe it so that you don't miss all future videos. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will get the notification of my all new tutorials. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Till that time, keep watching, keep learning.